Okay, good afternoon again. We're in the next phase of this process, which is the cool phase is actually using these little utensils. We're gonna put the different ingredients in the jar. Now, I'm gonna do the garlics first. And basically, cut them any how you want. You could dice them, slice them, chop them up to minute pieces. It really doesn't matter because you're not really eating the garlic. You just want the flavor in the jar. So you might see some people, what they will do, they will have the entire garlic. They just drop the whole garlic right in the jar. But I'll just dice them up per jar. And I said I have six jars. So I'm just going to do six of them. And yes, you're going to see the whole thing. And I might edit some of this out. Why? Because you don't need to see me cutting garlic. But so each one, garlic in the jar. All right? And we have six containers that we're going to do. So I'll put them here just to expedite. Actually, I don't want to block your view if you come in at any point. Slice the garlic any how you want. It doesn't really matter. It's up to you. The key is getting the garlic into a jar. All right, so now some people put the garlic in first and they put all the spices in first and I could have done it that way. But at the end of the day, it's going to soak so it will get the flavor in all of it. So six jars, oops, I did out of, okay, there you go. Almost forgot where I put it. Six jars, six sets of garlic, sliced, diced, minced, whatever word you like. <laughs> What makes you comfortable, I know people argue over nothing, <laughs> right? Like, which way should the toilet paper go? <laughs> Down, so they up, this, this, and which way does it not, does it work? Does it work both ways? Then both work ways are sufficient. So the garlic are inside, and now the next I wanna do, celery seeds, celery seeds, and it's only a quarter teaspoon. So you pop your top off, and in each jar, and for this I could put all the jars here, just because it makes it easier for me to do the process. So I'm gonna pop the lid off and it's just a quarter teaspoon in all of them. All right, and that's it. And if you have everything out, the process is not too bad. So your celery is done. Now normally when I'm doing things, I like to put stuff away, but for this, I'll just leave it here. Then I'm gonna have my peppercorn, peppercorn. Ah, da, 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 da. Peppercorn, I'm gonna put in one, wait, wait, peppercorn? It's a quarter teaspoon of peppercorn. So I found my quarter teaspoon, da, 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 da. And again, you don't have to put this. This is strictly if you like spicy stuff. <laughs> That's what all this for. And you're gonna put it in to each jar. Oops. I kind of like it this way because I can be no, or I remember what I put in last. And you put it away. Then you're gonna have again your dill seed. <laughs> dill is important. Again, quarter teaspoon. Most of it is a quarter teaspoon. And you get your dill in. And you could also pepper and every, I mean, preserve your pickles and all your. Even in the big jar, even though it's going to have more water, you put the same one. Yeah, I'm going to put the same one. And so it was just asked, what about the big jar? I mean, you could put a little bit more if you like, but the amount of water is not going to be, really be that much different. And so you got your dill. Now, if the, if the jar was much larger, you definitely have to compensate for that. Now, mustard here, this is the only one which is a difference. This one is a full teaspoon. Wow, that's a whole lot. Um, get my tea. Seed. Mustard seed. And these are all the seeds. You don't want the flake or the whatever else you might have out there. You want the actual seed. And you're going to drop a teaspoon in. All right. Ooh, I'm smelling it and I'm actually getting hungry. <laughs> From the Asian market. Now, I'm tempted to do my Asian stuff, but that might not be politically right. And then you have your crushed peppers. And the crushed peppers, I'm going to put in a half a teaspoon. I hope you edit that for me now. <laughs> half a <coughs> teaspoon of your crushed peppers. Oops, this one needs a little bit more. It would be too much. All right, half a teaspoon of crushed peppers. 
Hold on. And you're finished. Now the fun part. Da 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 da. A big funnel. They have a fancy name for it, and I don't know, remember what it is. It's just a big funnel. Wide mouth funnel. Wide mouth funnel. That sounds good to me. And your ladle. We have the red one. Or your fancy spoon. And all you're gonna do, you're just going to ladle it in. Ladle, ladle, ladle it. Now, the, this brand has been um, soaking for a while. It's a combination, water, sugars, some people put vinegar, you know, and you're gonna put it in. And what you want to do, let me get it up. So it's not just straight water. And it's about an inch below where you're gonna close it off. Okay, an inch below the line. And you're gonna do it for all of them. So you might not see all of these, but I'll do them if you happen to catch the whole thing. Uh -oh. That ridge is the marker, Dave. Yeah, there's, a, there's an actual marker on it. Now, if you push them down, like I said, really tight, um, they might not float, <laughs> but I discovered they still float. It just helps with the whole floating process. Okay, let's see. Oops. All right. And the next one. I'm not quite sure how clear you'll see that. I'm trying to bring it here. And again, you're just going to ladle in your brine right up to the marker. I'll bring one up closer when I'm finished. I hope I made enough brine. I think I did. The canister is still warm. And you just ladle it in. Now, if you could have it in a jar and pour it in, that would be just fine as well. This just prevents you from pouring too fast and spilling it and burning your hand. That's really what I concluded this does for you. Okay. And then the last one. And then after, I'll show you the next step that we're going to go through. So I'm not going to discuss pretty much the type of um, preservative I use or because um, everyone does it differently. Some use lemon juice, some use white vinegar, some use apple cider vinegar. I'm not here to, to tell you which, which is best, no vinegar. But um, you make the decision. I don't know where you are in your health. So um, I could just tell you, um, decide which one works best for you. So now, as I'm here, I'm, I'm looking around and I can see some need a little bit more water. The taller one, of course, is going to need some more. All right, there's a mark on the top where you want to put it to. And you make sure they all fill the same spot. Now, it's not finished here. What you need to do at this point, you need to take the air bubbles out of your uh, okra. So you're going to use, your, I use the back end. And I go down and I just push around the back end of the okra. Just push around at the bottom, and what that's going to do is going to get some of the air out of these okra, because okra is really hollow. And pushing down your okra, because they will float to the top. They're going to look like they're sticking out. No, they're just floating to the top. That's why you want to have it down as tight as you can. See that this floats right to the top, so you have to push them down. All right? You want to go through all of them, taking out all the extra air that's in the bottom. Now, if you don't have one of these tools, use, uh, oh, popped right up. Use the bottom of a uh, butter knife or a spoon, all right? And you just, see, it keeps popping up. So they look like they're out, but you should be fine. Just push them back down, push them back down into brine. Getting all the air out as best you can. You know, I might edit out some of this. That's okay. Now, once you've done this, right? What you want to do, let me get a napkin. <laughs> you want to wipe off the top of the lid. Make sure there's no excess food or anything there. And you're going to have your cap, your lid. Your lid is going to go on top, right? And then you're going to put the cap on. 
Just hand tight. Just hand tight, finger tight. Don't squeeze it down, just finger tight. And that'll become more important as you go. Press it down. Oops, look at that, I'm rushing. Make sure there's no extra food. Now, the reason why you wanna wipe the lid that's so there's no extra food, because if there's food there, the lid will not seal. It will not seal, it will not pop in place and secure what's inside the jar, right? So you wanna make sure that you wipe off the lid, all right, so there's no extra spice or anything and then you wanna pop your lid on it. Tighten it down. And again, they look like they're up, but they're just floating. Just push them down, they'll go down. Don't really stress about that. They'll go down after everything is settled. And you wanna put your lid on. Now, let me tell you this, my lids, I keep them in boiling water before I use them to make sure there's no contaminants. Again, wipe the jar off, all right? And pop your lid on. All right, same thing. Make sure you push them down. They keep floating up. Wipe your lid off. And just hand tight. Don't try to force them down, hand tight, okay? So I'm gonna make some switches and I'll show you now what we go from here, what the next step is, okay? Hold on.